The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. Our top stories this week. The frame hardware, in addition to the actual T2 tiles, we have all of this uh, backing support material so that we can hang them on a wall in some kind of vertical position and have them not be weight, have all the weight not be hang on the electrical connections because they can't take it. Been working on the frame on and off for months. I believe all of that stuff is credibly done. Now you just add a one inch pipe on a stand or attached to the wall or the ceiling and we should be able to deploy the whole thing. Uh, um, these were the actual final pieces. Eight of these go together to hold a single power zone, which is an array of four by four tiles. In addition to that, we needed some kind of interface for the tops of the power zones to connect to the one inch steel pipe. And that's what we've been working on. We did a bunch of poss possible designs for it uh, uh, with different trade-offs. This is the one that I ended up settling on that was fairly short, but it kind of latched over the pipe and it had a, a, a pretty good chunk of plastic where it needed to strengthen up to keep it from flexing printed up a bunch of them in the urban gray prusament PETG filament that I've really come to like quite a bit. The PETG seems really quite nice. Uh, and did eight of them ultimately in the uh, in the gray. Uh, did not have enough of the urban gray to do all the rest. Decided I was going to use the other colors so that we could have sort of one column that was headed by one color, another column was headed by gray, another column was headed and so forth. So I've been working, doing that up, and um, there are the gray ones, the eight gray ones that each a pair of them supports essentially uh, a column of four tiles. Well, a column of four per power zone and then all the way down as far as it goes. So we did ultramarine blue. Uh, uh, it also, ha you know, each one has these two pieces. It's got the, the upper curvy thing, but then it's also got this part down here, which is the part that actually connects to the, the frames, which are part of the repeating tiling pattern. Uh, um, these things were looking pretty good, although they seem to have a, a little bit of a possibility of kind of flopping over more than I wanted them to, so I tried to put some little uh, retaining clips in them. There's another picture of an 8 coming off. You can kind of see the the uh, retaining clips right here. I put it under the microscope. It's this piece right here down at the edge that, that tries to pop over the the, the frame piece when it, when it comes clicking in. Uh, that turned out not really to work because this thing fails almost immediately because again it's being done uh, with the layers stacking up which are not very resistant to uh, 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 forces to the sides. I didn't care. I just went ahead and did it. They're going to have little busted little nibs on the thing, so be it. Uh, um, did uh, carmine red with glitter, and that's the, <laughs> the other bunch. So we've got urban gray, we've got ultramarine blue, and we've got carmine red, uh, the red interface, pipe interfaces as well, and 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 that's it. And so the the urban gray ones you saw, they're still on the uh, the power zone that we've got. This is the, the rest of them, the blue and the uh, red. This thing looks like a bag of gift wrapping supplies. But with that, with all of the other stuff, I think. The hardware is done. There's a tiny little asterisk about how we're going to hang the wall warts, one for each power zone, small amounts of electrical, electromechanical stuff like that, but I think basically we're there. So, that's my road. Uh, uh, all right, and I wanted to spend a little time, especially because I really hadn't done much work uh, on the project myself, <clears throat> uh, but the community is continuing to build the community is building stuff and it, it it warms my heart it gives me hope it gives me confidence so i just wanted to feed a little bit of that back to the folks who are watching the videos and and so people will know uh, uh mario casero hello uh, uh showed up from sao paulo i guess brazil uh, um and you know i love these things you know i've been i've been around robust first and a life for more than seven years now you know this is so great you know you, you, you do these things, you, you put these things out there, you hope that people are hearing it or seeing it or some people may be getting it, and then they show up and it's totally great. So uh, Mario has been uh, power watching his way through season one, uh, the first year of the T Tuesday updates. He's, he's gotten as far as 229 as of a few days ago. Hi Mario, thanks for surfacing. Uh, uh, 
it, you know, to take that step from just sort of secretly watching videos like everybody does, like I do, to actually saying something. I know that's a big step, but I would very rarely do it myself. Uh, always wanted to, you know, just kind of stay safe. But but folks pop up, and I really appreciate that. Another one is Glenn Ruschling, who put some comments over on the YouTube channel, and, and he's like a hardware guy. He knows about embedded. He was saying, you know, why not use application-specific integrated circuits? You could do all kinds of incredibly great stuff for for low power low price and so on uh, uh, I we, we had a comment a little comments back and forth and and he had he's now discovered the t2 tile project and he binged through a whole bunch of them as well uh, um, Glenn thanks to, thanks for taking a look thanks for your comments uh, you know I really hope that one day in the T3 tile or the T2.5 or something like that, we get to the point where we could think about optimizing the hardware because we would have built the stack far enough up, we would have gotten experience with it so that we would know what we want. That's what I think is the problem with most of the parallel chips. Like uh, Glenn mentioned, a thing from a company called Green Arrays, and there's, you know, sort of Attila and Parallel. There's a, a bunch of different things that end up, in, as far as I can tell, being very niche. Uh, um, um, and usually it's because compared to what it's looking like we need in computational power per each little bit, the hardware guys haven't been willing to spend that much silicon, that much design and, and hardware down at that level. Even the uh, Intel, Knight's Corner, and Knight's Crossing, all of those things that were putting entire Pentiums and paralyzing them, they were starving the amount of SRAM, starving the instruction stack, uh, instruction caches, and so forth. So my goal in this project is to actually, you know, build all the way up to where we can demonstrate not necessarily actual utility but demonstration toward utility and then say if we wanted to have that we could have that now how would we like to optimize the hardware and how would we budget it and where would we spend our gates uh, uh, and you know I would love it if, if if Glenn or you know other embedded folks that have experience in this area wanted to help out wanted to contribute wanted to be part of that kind of development it's down the road I have hope and Spencer Harmon, who has definitely got the most experience actually in the MFMS code base, and which I, which I say thank you, and I'm sorry, and once again, I always wish my own uh, open source codes were better quality than they are, <sighs> but you, you ship the code that you got and you try to make it better, and, Harm, and Spencer is working on uh, getting better uh, JSON compatible output from the simulation so it would be easier to, to visualize. Uh, Andrew also started working with him about developing some J JavaScript type visualization stuff. I don't know how far it, it got, but that is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. It's totally great. Uh, um, and Anton Mikhailov. Uh, so we talk, I talked several uh, months ago or whatever it was in the previous bunch uh, about using GPUs to speed up simulation, you know, to make cut, cut a few corners, make some simplifications in the language that you can use to express, but not even that many simplifications. And then we were seeing, you know, for Fork Bomb and Dragon Res, these incredible huge arrays running fast. Uh, um, that stalled a little bit because it seems like Anton ran across a kind of a compiler bug and the, the underlying stuff that was supplied to be driving the GPU processing cards and they weren't really able to fix it because they wanted everybody to migrate away from the previous software base to this new software base called Vulkan. Anton pulled the trigger, he's taken the Vulcan plunge, and, you know, saw the, which is totally great, and I thought, you know, okay, so in a month or two, maybe he'll have something running. No, you know, it was like, uh, you know, five days later. <laughs> It's like running. And now, uh, you know, here's Dreg and Res in Vulcan GPU parallelism. So that is super great, too. Uh, um, all of these stuff, people joining the community, contributing in any way that they can think of. Thank you. It's great. It makes me feel good. All right. And finally... <laughs> I committed to try to write a 50,000 word novel from scratch in the month of November. Uh, we are now uh, a third of the way, more than a third of the way uh, through the month of November. I should have a third of 50,000 words. I have nothing like that. But man, and what an experience it's being. Uh, so I wanted to write a novel called Best Effort, a 50,000 word science fiction novel. 
how hard could it be to sign up? I signed up. Uh, I started getting these little badges for updating my counts two days in a row, three days in a row. Got to 5,000 words, got to 1,667 words. That's the number we're supposed to do every day. Ha, I've done that maybe like two days. I don't know what it is. I keep on updating my counts no matter what, how many words I've gotten or not. Uh, uh, and so it is. So now I've gotten the seven days in a row and I've gotten to 10,000 words. But there was an asterisk on those 10,000 words. So this is what it looked like a week ago. The blue dotted line was the progress rate that I needed to be developing. The black, so the darker solid line is my progress actually getting, starting off very brave and already falling off after five days. Now we're at 12 days, and it's looking like this. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I managed to limp my way to, to, to 10,000 words, and then there's this strange uh, horizontal bit where like nothing was happening. Well, what was really happening there was I was taking out a whole bunch of those words that I had dictated using the Google voice typing that we looked at last week that was really it, it was it was garbage it was just it was thinking about what it'd be nice to have text and nice to have a story that did this it wasn't actually a story that did anything and that was inflating the word count significantly I gradually tore all that stuff out and now finally we're at sort of uh, like 11,000 or so words now most of which are legit legitimate story words. That doesn't mean they're good. It doesn't mean they'll last into the final thing if this thing already gets done, but it means they are legitimately part of the novel. So, uh, uh, step by step. So, last week my daily word count was looking like some kind of ski jump. Uh, now it's looking like, I don't know what it's looking like, some, uh, uh, yeah, it's looking... <laughs> like a couple of ski jumps or something with the most recent one it seems like the word count counter is always a day behind uh, my word count was minus 36 that was yesterday's result after tearing out a bunch of stuff and not having quite as much legitimate stuff to replace it with uh, uh, last week I was going to be done done uh, uh, on November 16th uh, sorry December 16th now I'll be done on December 20th ha I mean one of the things that is becoming clearer to me as I actually write this. I mean, the thing that's been so amazing for me is normally whenever I write uh, a scientific paper or whatever it is, or, you know, a script for one of these rants, uh, I have a, a tight uh, space limit, a page limit, a time limit, whatever it is. Um, and I am always working backwards from that, where here, the, it's so big. I need so many words, so many stories, that it's really, you know, when I can get to the point where it's just let it run let the characters talk let them do whatever they do and it's like you know it's great you know it's the flow and so i've had a few patches of that where you know in an hour or a half an hour uh, i did a, a bunch of dialogue and a bunch of little pushback and all this kind of stuff whatever it is who knows i mean it had it had uh, purposes but it was you know, supposed to build the characters plant seeds have have foreboding for later in the world in the uh, story and so forth uh, all seemed plausible, but it just flowed. I felt like I was cheating. You know, <laughs> how can this be work? Uh, like that. What's really been hard for me so far is doing the world building backstory stuff. Cause I've got a chapter which is kind of interleaving with sort of stuff happening, uh, directly in real time and then little bits of backstory to start in introducing the technology that is driving the best effort story for me. Uh, uh, and you know, every sentence of the backstory is really, you know, for me, it's really important because it's setting up the whole set of affordances, the whole set of what might happen, what might not happen in the ultimate world. I seriously doubt, unless I get a tremendous amount, much more flow, that I will get to 50,000 words in November. And even worse, at the pace that this novel is unfolding, I don't believe it's going to be done in 50,000 words. It starts to seem more like it's going to be some kind of trilogy, or who knows. But I am damning the torpedoes. I'm continuing to push, and we will see where we end up. And my goal is to have so much stuff, have, you know, 100 pages, whatever it is, of semi-legitimate stuff that I will be too embarrassed not to finish it. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Uh, uh, that's what my internal progress bars looked like last week. This is what they look like now. Uh, these uh, Going down here and here was where I was tearing out a bunch of the dictation that wasn't real. We're more solid situation here, although who knows going forward. And it just happens every day. Oh man, it's, uh, it's quite a thing.
hopefully I will be back in a week uh, uh, to have a little bit more news. Thank you for being here. Have a good week.